This episode is brought to you by IVP. Asian Americans know the pain of being called names that deny their humanity, but it's a challenge to discern what names reflect their true identities as Asian Americans and as Christians. In the book, Learning Our Names, a team of East Asian, Southeast Asian, and South Asian Christians explore the identities and history of the Asian diaspora in America, who have been shaped and misshaped by migration, culture, and faith. As a listener of this podcast, you can receive 25% off of Learning Our Names when you use the promo code IVPOD25. That's I-V-P-O-D-2-5 at ivpress.com. This is IVP. Listening to Get in the Word with Truth's Table. Your word is truth, your word is life. Presented by Innervar City Press. Your word is truth, your word is life. A daily audio Bible podcast, read by Dr. Christina Edmondson. And Akemini Uwan. Let's get in the Word, and may the Word get in us. Open our eyes, that we may behold wonderful things in your Word. Old Testament reading, 2 Kings chapter 15, verses 32-38 through 38. Jotham's reign over Judah In the second year of the reign of Israel's king Pekah, son of Ramaliah, Uzziah's son Jotham became king over Judah. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. He did what the Lord approved, just as his father Uzziah had done, but the high places were not eliminated. The people continued to offer sacrifices and burn incense on the high places. He built the upper gate to the Lord's temple. The rest of the events of Jotham's reign, including his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll called the Annals of the Kings of Judah. In those days, the Lord prompted King Rezin of Syria and Pekah, son of Ramaliah, to attack Judah. Jotham passed away and was buried with his ancestors in the city of his ancestor David. His son Ahaz replaced him as king. Micah chapter 1, beginning at verse 1. Introduction. This is the Lord's message that came to Micah of Moresheth during the time of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, which he saw concerning Samaria and Jerusalem. The judge is coming. Listen, all you nations, pay attention, all inhabitants of earth. The sovereign Lord will act as a witness against you. The Lord will accuse you from his majestic palace. The Lord is coming out of his dwelling place. He will descend and march on the earth's mountaintops. The mountains will crumble beneath him, and the valleys will split apart like wax before a fire, like water dumped down a steep slope. All this is because of Jacob's rebellion and the sins of the nation of Israel. And just what is Jacob's rebellion? Isn't it Samaria's doings? And what is Judah's sin? Isn't it Jerusalem's doings? I will turn Samaria into a heap of ruins in an open field, into a place for planting vineyards. I will dump the rubble of her walls down into the valley and lay bare her foundations. All her carved idols will be smashed to pieces. All her metal cult statutes will be destroyed by fire. I will make a waste heap of all her images. Since she gathered the metal as a prostitute collects her wages, the idols will become a prostitute's wages again. For this reason, I will mourn and wail. I will walk around barefoot and without my outer garments. I will howl like a wild dog and screech like an owl. For Samaria's disease is incurable. It has infected Judah. It has spread to the leadership of my people and even to Jerusalem. Don't spread the news in Gath. Don't shed even a single tear. And Beth Lephra roll about in mourning, in the dust. Residents of Saphir pass by in nakedness and humiliation. The residents of Zanan have not escaped. Beth Ezil mourns. He takes from you what he desires. Indeed, the residents of Maroth hope for something good to happen, though the Lord has sent disaster against the city of Jerusalem. 
Residents of Lachish hitched the horses to the chariots. You influenced daughter Zion to sin, for Israel's rebellious deeds can be traced back to you. Therefore, you will have to say farewell to Morasheth Gath. The residents of Akzib will be as disappointing as a dried-up well to the kings of Israel. Residents of Marasha, a conqueror, will attack you. The leaders of Israel shall flee to Adullam. Shave your heads bald as you mourn for the children you love. Shave your foreheads as bald as an eagle, for they are taken from you into exile. Second Chronicles chapter 27 through Second Chronicles chapter 28 verse 15. Second Chronicles chapter 27, beginning at verse 1. Jotham's reign. Jotham was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem. His mother was Jerusha, the daughter of Zadok. He did what the Lord approved, just as his father Uzziah had done. He did not, however, have the audacity to enter the temple, yet the people were still sinning. He built the upper gate to the Lord's temple and did a lot of work on the wall in the area known as Ophel. He built cities in the hill country of Judah and fortresses and towers in the forest. He launched a military campaign against the king of the Ammonites and defeated them. That year, the Ammonites paid him 100 talents of silver, 10,000 cores of wheat, and 10,000 cores of barley. The Ammonites also paid the same amount of annual tribute the next two years. Jotham grew powerful because he was determined to please the Lord as God. The rest of the events of Jotham's reign, including all his military campaigns and his accomplishments, are recorded in the scroll of the kings of Israel and Judah. He was 25 years old when he began to reign and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem. Jotham passed away and was buried in the city of David. His son Ahaz replaced him as king. Second Chronicles chapter 28, verses 1-15 through 15. Ahaz's reign Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem. He did not do what pleased the Lord in contrast to his ancestor David. He followed in the footsteps of the kings of Israel. He also made images of the Baals. He offered sacrifices in the valley of Ben-Hinnom and passed his sons through the fire, a horrible sin practiced by the nations whom the Lord drove out before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. The Lord his God handed him over to the king of Syria. The Syrians defeated him and deported many captives to Damascus. He was also handed over to the king of Israel, who thoroughly defeated him. And one day, Pekah, son of Ramaliah, killed 120,000 warriors in Judah because they had abandoned the Lord God of their ancestors. Zikri, an Ephraimite warrior, killed the king's son, Masaiah, Azrikam, the supervisor of the palace, and Elkanah, the king's second-in-command. The Israelites seized from their brothers 200,000 wives, sons, and daughters. They also carried off a huge amount of plunder back to Samaria. Oded, a prophet of the Lord, was there. He went to meet the army as they arrived in Samaria and said to them, Look, because the Lord God of your ancestors was angry with Judah, he handed them over to you. You have killed them so mercilessly that God has taken notice. And now you are planning to enslave the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Yet are you not also guilty before the Lord your God? Now listen to me. Send back those you have seized from your brothers, for the Lord is very angry at you. Some of the Ephraimite family leaders, Azariah, son of Jehochanan, Barakiah, son of Meshilamoth, Jechaziah, son of Shalom, and Amasa, son of Halai, confronted those returning from the battle. They said to them, Don't bring those captives here. Are you planning on making us even more sinful and guilty before the Lord? Our guilt is already great, and the Lord is very angry at Israel. So the soldiers released the captives and the plunder before the officials in the entire assembly. Men were assigned to take the prisoners and find clothes among the plunder for those who were naked. So they clothed them, supplied them with sandals, gave them food and drink, and provided them with oil to rub on their skin. They put the ones who couldn't walk on donkeys. They brought them back to their brothers at Jericho, the city of date palm trees, and then returned to Samaria. Second Kings chapter 16, verses 1 through 9. Ahaz's reign over Judah. In the seventeenth year of the reign of Pekah, son of Ramaliah, Jotham's son Ahaz became king over Judah. Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for sixteen years in Jerusalem. He did not do what pleased the Lord his God, in contrast to his ancestor David. He followed in the footsteps of the kings of Israel. He passed his son through the fire, a horrible sin practiced by the nations whom the Lord drove out from before the Israelites. He offered sacrifices and burned incense on the high places, on the hills, and under every green tree. At that time, King Rezin of Syria and King Pekah, son of Ramaliah of Israel, attacked Jerusalem. They besieged Ahaz, but were unable to conquer him. At that time, King Rezin of Syria recovered Elat 
first Syria. He drove the Judah Heights from there. Syrians arrived in Elat and lived there to this very day. Ahaz sent messengers to King Tiglath, Peleser of Assyria, saying, I am your servant and your dependent. March up and rescue me from the power of the king of Syria and the king of Israel who have attacked me. Then Ahaz took the silver and gold that were in the Lord's temple and in the treasuries of the royal palace and sent it as a tribute to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria responded favorably to his request. He attacked Damascus and captured it. He deported the people to Kir and executed Rezin. Isaiah chapter 7, verses 1 through 9. Ahaz receives a sign. During the reign of Ahaz, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, king of Judah, king Rezin of Syria, and king Pekah, son of Ramaliah, of Israel marched up to Jerusalem to do battle, but they were unable to prevail against it. It was reported to the family of David, Syria has allied with Ephraim. They and their people were emotionally shaken, just as the trees of the forest shake before the wind. So the Lord told Isaiah, Go out with your son Shir Jashub and meet Ahaz at the end of the conduit of the upper pool that is located on the road to the field where they wash and dry cloth. Tell him, make sure you stay calm. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated by these two stubs of smoking logs or by the raging anger of Rezin, Syria, and the son of Ramaliah. Syria has plotted with Ephraim and the son of Ramaliah to bring about your demise. They say, let's attack Judah, terrorize it and conquer it. Then we'll set up the son of Tabin as its king. For this reason, the sovereign Lord says, it will not take place. It will not happen. For Syria's leader is Damascus, and the leader of Damascus is Rezin. Within 65 years, Ephraim will no longer exist as a nation. Ephraim's leader is Samaria, and Samaria's leader is the son of Ramaliah. If your faith does not remain firm, then you will not remain secure. This is the word of God for the people of God. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Let us go boldly to God's throne of grace. Covenant-keeping God, I thank you for your word. Thank you, oh God, for uh, just seeing, oh God, the, the various transfers of power, oh God. In these Old Testament passages, oh God, seeing how one king, for instance, King Jotham, was good and did good in the sight of the Lord and followed in the footsteps of his own father, Uzziah. And then Jotham's son, Ahaz, did not uh, follow in the footsteps of his father, Jotham, nor his grandfather, Uzziah, nor the an- his ancestor, oh God, David. Lord, I just pray, oh God. Uh, I think there's there's a sense in which many people can be deceived about their relationship with God, thinking that we can ride on the waves um, and the prayers of our, our, our mother, our father's faith, our grandmother, our grandfather's faith. And indeed, many of us, our manifestations and testaments, the faithful prayer of our ancestors, the faithful prayers of those saints who have gone before us, and we thank God for them. But each one of us, <laughs> each one of us must come to faith in Jesus Christ by grace, through faith, oh God. We cannot ro- ride the salvation coattails of our ancestors. We must make our calling and election sure. We must declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We must answer the question of who do you say I am? Each of us individually must answer that question. And God willing, by your grace, we will answer that question in unity among with the other saints who have gone before and answered that question boldly and without shame, because we don't want to be ashamed on the day of judgment. We don't want to be ashamed, and we don't want you to say you never knew us. Help us to know, oh God, that just because, maybe just because we might have grown up on the pews, just because we went to church every Sunday, or or maybe, maybe we didn't grow up going to church every Sunday, but but there's a sense in which when we have, when, when, when you have people that are church kids, there's an assumption that that oh we're we're good we're good with God because I do this we fall on our works not knowing oh God that you have called us to a saving faith 
a living relationship with you uh, through the power of the gospel? Would you help us, oh God, to make our confession line up, oh God, and make it sure and let it be evident in our lives, oh God. And for those that maybe were not church kids and who came later or, or those who are still trying to figure out who Jesus is and if they ought to uh, give their life over, I pray that the Holy Spirit would show up mightily for those who question, for those who doubt, for those who are unsure, for those who have been harmed. I pray that you will meet them at their point of need, that you uh, would give them just irrefutable evidence of the reality of Jesus Christ. Give them irrefutable, irrefutable impression of the thrice holy God. Show up in a way that only you can show up where they cannot deny the reality of your existence, oh God. Because those who come to you have got to believe that you are the one and only God and that you exist, oh God. So I just pray that you would help us, oh God, to know, oh Lord God, that we have to confess our faith in Jesus Christ. It's not our mama's confession. It's not our grandmama's confession. It's not our grandfather's confession. It's not our sister, our brother, our cousin. None of their confessions. <laughs> are going to save us. It is our confession of Jesus Christ that brings us into right fellowship with you and makes us co-heirs with Christ and that we will have eternal life and dwell with you. So would you help us? Would you help us, oh God, to stay on that path, oh God, not to stray to the left and to the right, not to follow the tide and the current of the culture. Following you, oh Lord, is countercultural. It is not cool. It is not sexy. It's not appealing to the world, but we know that the world is passing away and that we know that the new earth and the new heaven will be breaking forth in a twinkling of an eye. And I pray that we will be ready, but we will be found ready when Jesus either cracks the sky or calls us home. I pray this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. We pray this time of getting the word with Truth's Table has encouraged us all to not only be hearers of God's word, but doers. Share your reflections on these scriptures with us on Twitter and Instagram using the hashtag GetInTheWord and hashtag Truth's Table. Saints, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Go with God. Get in the Word with Truth's Table is a production of InterVarsity Press. For 75 years, IVP has created and published resources that deepen lives for Christ to engage the university, church, and the world. Visit ivpress.com for more information. Our Bible reading plan is from biblestudytogether.com, and the Bible version is the new English translation used by permission. Sound engineering is from Pottery Studios, and our executive producer is Helen Lee.